So, what is energy which is not dissipated at all, dissipated, wasted? Because this is important to understand. The quality of energy, which is highly intelligent, highly capable of reasoning, highly capable of analyzing, looking, observing, self-critically aware, and therefore constantly removing any impediment in the movement that requires a great deal of energy. People who are purely, not purely, one can view semi physical energy, you know, you have plenty of them in the world, their energy is limited naturally. Their energy is controls all thought. You understand? Oh, you understand what I'm saying? I may be stupid, but I've got tremendous energy. What I think is right. And that drives me. And you see such people all over the world with extraordinary amount of energy. And those people who are very, very, very clever, their energy, their energy it goes into calculation, all the rest of it. Now, is there an energy which is not contaminated, polluted by or through conflict? You understand all this? Right? Are we together in this little bit? Then we must inquire why we human beings for the last forty, fifty thousand years of our evolution, which is some biologists and the archaeologists are saying that we have lived on this earth as human beings walking on two legs, why from that time on till now we are in perpetual conflict? Right? What? Is it agreement and disagreement? Look at it. I agree to something and you disagree with that something. There's beginning of conflict. I believe in certain this speak one believes in ideals, the other does immediately a conflict. I'll, one likes, the other doesn't like. One protects the few, and the few are against everybody else. In our relationship with each other, there is conflict, man-woman conflict. And there is conflict between the guru and the disciple. Don't you notice all this? The disciple wants to become like the guru. How silly that is. But the guru himself probably is rather silly. So there is this perpetual struggle, conflict. I, one holds on to something, identify oneself with that something and one resists at any price. Uh, 
And between man and woman there is not only sexual conflict, but also each human being, the woman and the man, or the man and the girl and so on, so on, each wants to express things in his own way. He's ambitious and she's ambitious. And therefore there's conflict. Right? Why do we live this way? That's immense waste of energy, right? But why we human beings of this long duration of experience, knowledge, war, suffering, the eternal anxiety and so on, why do we live this way? Why do we, who are so clever, who have so much knowledge, so learned, why do we carry on this way? Please ask this, ask this question. Don't wait to find out. Ask and demand it. Put your passion behind to find out. Is it our brain which evolved through conflict? Right? Conflict with nature, conflict in the air, conflict with everything. So our brain has become accustomed to it. Having become accustomed, it says that's the way to live, that's the way to progress. If there was no competition, there would be no progress. And so the brain, which has become accustomed, used to, to live in a certain environment, says that's, that's the way to live. Are you in that position? You? Sitting there, I say, well, that's I'm used to this. And because you have used to it, you rationalize it. You see, yes, in, a, in nature, everything struggles. The little tree, the little plant is struggling towards the light. The tiger kills the deer. Right? So it's part of our nature to be violent, to be in to be in conflict, to be at war with each other, and therefore war with much at greater significance. Right? We have we have lived that way. 